No. Last night, I was doing a live on Sebastian. And I found out some interesting information. So, after I come off the live, I went and found this interview where the parents were, get, were talking to a newsreel. And it's very interesting. There's two parts. There was one part which was done on another YouTuber's page. And I'll show that and I'll give credit to that, that you but to well to both those YouTubers. Um I'll show you that bit. And then I'll show you the videos they made. They've done it in four sections. Section one, two, three and four. Don't know why they did it like that, but they did. So it's very interesting. It may, it highlighted a lot for me. Right. Especially the one where he's on the phone call. Well, he was, I don't think he was on a phone call. He was, he was on YouTube, but he's doing it on a live show. So he didn't show his face. You could just hear him talking and the mother talking. Anyway, so. I'm going to, oh, first of all, I want, first of all, I want to show you this, because this is what I found out about it also popped up on my screen about how they're scaling back the investig the search, not the investigation. They're scaling back the search, and now looking more on the investigative investigation side of it. So I've tried to find this clip, but I can't find it anywhere. I don't know. If, I don't know if I'm pointing in the right keywords, I don't know, but it's not showing up for me. So I'm showing this, showing this from another YouTuber called Trev, Trev Time. I'll put his link in the description. And he, he's there for the children. He's there totally for the children. So, and this is the guy I found, found out about this channel about this, about Sebastian from a week ago. And it was when I seen his channel that I thought, no, this need, no, I was talking about this at the time, right? There's no other YouTubers out there talking about it that I knew of. So I did a live about this. Got some more information, started a live. And that was a week ago. Right, right, now, hold oh, on. No. I've just got to get this set up so you can see this. Right, that's on the screen. So this is the uh, police our Sumner, Sumner County, the, I mean, the search teams, to, uh, just releasing the fact that they are scaling it back, the search, not the investigation, just the search. They will still be looking, so if they get any information come through, they will send whoever needs to go out, be it the police or searchers, whoever. Right, now yeah, we're going to listen to this. So thank you to Trev for this because I can't find this anywhere. I did try. So here we go.
Yes, sir. Is everybody good? Uh, hey, good Eric Craddock from the Summer County Sheriff's Office, and I'm the Chief Deputy here. Uh, John, Director of EMA, I uh, wanted to come to the public and give you guys an update on the search for Sebastian Rogers. Last Monday morning at about 6.30, Sebastian was reported missing from his home. Uh, since then, we've conducted an extensive and, and exhaustive search uh, around the home, looking for any evidence, any trace of Sebastian. Um, at this time, the decision has been made to scale back on the ground search operations. Uh, uh, let me be clear that this does not diminish our commitment to finding Sebastian. This is simply us transitioning from the ground search to the investigative side. Uh, we are still committing no details to indicate that Sebastian is not alive. Uh, we, we are going to follow up on every lead. We have a planned response. If anyone has a sighting of Sebastian, uh, our patrol deputies will be out, our investigators will be out. We're still getting with law enforcement across the state. Uh, we're still consulting with experts. Um, this decision does not come lightly. We have consulted with uh, experts in search and rescue. Uh, every time we've asked, they've done everything you can do. Um, at this time, Director Warner. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Will. <clears throat> We'll continue to have a command post uh, um, at the fire station there. Uh, we won't man it 24-7, um, but we will have we will have K-9 unit. We'll have teams ready to go. The sheriff's also have deputies on patrol. And if we get any report, we'll respond to that location. We'll send K-9 to that location. And teams, we get any, we will continue and any, any we will reactivate to come out and help us in the search for Sebastian. Um, they've come from as far as Knox County. We called in the State National Guard to help. The Army National Guard was here to help. Uh, if there was a resource we thought we was to help locate Sebastian, uh, and we will continue to come in. Uh, the sheriff's continue to urge family to check your properties. Uh, no detail is one five four five eight. eight. Thank you. So that was the chief deputy as well as the director. They've been the ones speaking in the case so far. I'm sorry, I'm on mute again. Ron, the scanning back, but I'm going to have to get my headphones sorted now to charge them up. Anyway, the scanning back, but they're not stopping altogether. But what I can't understand, and at first I was all for the parents, I was. I wanted this lad to be brought back home 
I thought, yes, okay, he's, he's probably climbed out his bedroom window, window, and he's wandered off, gone out to meet up with a friend or someone. You know what I mean? Like most teenagers have done or do. But then when I heard he was autistic, I thought, oh, don't know. Autistic children wouldn't do that. They like everything. They like a routine. Right? They like routine. They like to go up at a certain time, eat at a certain time, bath at a certain time. Go, you know what I mean? And sometimes it's very hard, I find, to even get a child with autism to go out to the shops because they don't want that. That's not their routine. Their routine is they want to stay at home or they want to go to a park which they know. They don't want to go to the shop. Right. So, so at first I was all for the parents. I really was. But then when it came out like that, there's no video cam, I think. Anyway, now I've shown you several times now on Google Maps, those roads, those big houses. They're going to have some sort of door camera or video camera, especially on the driveway where the cars are. If the cars fit all the cars in the garage, they're going to have that camera on the driveway. Right? Uh, there's no door cam video of them. Nothing. Right? And I, I think the only time they've got anything, can I show you the picture? Is where is he? This one here. Oh my god. So this one. This was taken on this I believe it was taken on this Sunday when they was out. Right? Now that's the only last time proof of life they've got is that photo that was taken. When they went out for something to eat on the Sunday afternoon or whenever they went out. There's nothing else after that. And that's why they are asking people in the area to search their ring doorbell, to search their video cameras. But any sign of him between Sunday afternoon, Monday morning, when he disappeared, when he would go up and walk out. Because that's the only time they've got a picture of him. I'm not sure if it was taken on a Saturday or a Sunday. That was the last picture. Apparently, from what I understand, I mean, right, hold on, I think there's another picture I've got a better one to see if this is. No. No, that isn't it. Um, hold on. It's on the uh, poster for him. I'm just going to find it now. Uh, all done. Right, let's show this one. Yeah, so it was this picture. Right, well, this was the last picture taken, that one. Right. So they've got no other, there's no other sightings of him after that. After they've come home, after they've been to the shops and everything, there's no sightings of him after that. You know, the parents said he didn't play out. He had no friends. He had a couple of friends at school. That was it. You know, I know the type of children who are autistic to make friends because other children don't understand. Understand them. Now, they can be 
Uh, some autistic children can be very timid and don't want to get involved with others. But then they will play with others, right? And then there's some, like my grandson, he hasn't been diagnosed, but he's got the traits of some, some autistic traits. And he's very, very, very loud. Very rampant, won't you? Very, like, loud. And he had this, when I was talking about their, their board, and you'll see the video, when I was talking about it, it was hitting me. It was like, oh my God, are they talking about my grandson here? Because everything they were saying about their son was hitting certain bounds off in my head about my grandson. He's very loud. He, he, my grandson loves to be outdoors. He loves to build dens. He's got a, a, a wild imagination. Right? Very wild imagination. Um, he loves to play with others, but there's, as I said, sometimes there's children in the park that don't quite get him, so back off from him, don't want to know him, and that upsets him. And I try to explain to him, look, they just don't understand you, Alice. You know what I mean? They don't understand you. But then he went to one park once and he clicked with these two children. Like, like he'd known them all his life from birth sort of thing he just clicked with them and they were so good together they were playing with each other so it's amazing how he can click with other children but if, right and then there's other children who don't want to go back away from him and it's a shame but apart Apparently, he, had, he didn't go outside to play. He didn't get any use of the internet. Now, I know the internet is not a good thing, especially for young, young kids and teenagers. Right? He plays Minecraft, but it's on that switch. On the switch. So it's not online. Um, all he's got on his phone is contacts. A calculator and that's it so we don't use his phone i'm not going to use his phone there's nothing on there for him to use it on to use right they don't believe he's got the not the intelligence but the understanding of what what people can be like online now there are some people who can be very very nasty online very nasty And so they don't let him have the internet. So you don't have no internet, you don't have no interaction with any of the children at, at home. He has, the only interaction he has is when he's at school. So it's 15 years of age. I think they've got a, they could let him have the internet. But like a lot of parents do, they monitor it. Right? And my grandson, well, both my grandsons, they go online. Well, they go on YouTube, YouTube Kids. Right? But we still monitor it. See what, to make sure, hold on, he hasn't gone on to something he shouldn't be watching, you know what I mean? Like sometimes, my grandson, he uses my tablet and he'll go on to YouTube, my YouTube. And I go, no, 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 you can't go on that one, sweetheart. That's for adults. You have to go on this one. So I have to monitor him if he's on my one. But he just goes, but your channels have better, your, your channels have better programs. You know what I mean? So sometimes I will let him go on my YouTube, but I monitor what he's watching. 
I might, I'll check on you, maybe a couple of minutes, what you're watching. Oh, oh okay, yeah, that's fine. Or I'll just go in the bedroom when he's in there and just look over his shoulder or sit by the side of him, wherever he's sitting, see what he's watching. If I see anything on there, it's signal that it's disturbing to me, then I'll say, what are you watching there? Should you be watching that? You know what I mean? So, I could do that and let him have some interaction with other children online. He's got no one. Do you know, for Christmas, you know what he asked for, for, for Christmas? To have some friends. How sad is that? He might be loved by his mother and all the rest of her family, but to actually ask at Christmas for what he wanted at Christmas, his friends. How sad is that? I found that really sad thing. So all he's got is his switch at the the gaming thing, which he plays Minecraft on, and some music that he loves to listen to. And that's it. Oh, and games and whatever that like, he can play with, board, board games maybe. He's brilliant at chess, which you'll hear about. So he loves games, but he's got no interaction with anyone, anyone his own age, apart from at school. And then he's only got one or two friends. So, but that's like my grandson, he's, he's, he's got a couple of friends at his school, one he really does get on well with, right, and there's a young girl who lives by, her grandfather lives by me, my, where I live, and sometimes she'll see him when she's out there playing, and she, she understands Ellis. You know what I mean? She knows him from school. So she interacts with him. And she knows how to interact with him. And she accepts him for who he is. And a lot of children don't accept children with autism for who they are. They see them as weird, not normal. Well, that's nasty. They are the most normal kids you can think. They are the cleverest children you can see. They pick up on something and they know exactly what to do. So they're not stupid. They are very, very clever. And it does annoy me when you have the children back away from children like Sebastian and other children with autism. Anyway, we are going to look at well, what I'll do is um, take this off uh, and just to be on the safe side, just to be on the safe side, I'm, oh, I'm going to no, this, this, all right, I'm putting that stuff in my disclaimer. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing non profit educational or personal use tip the balance in favour of fair use. This feature was made for entertainment purposes and is transformative in nature. So there's my disclaimer. All right, I'm even going to put my little disclaimer up at the top. I'll put it up there at the top. All right. And before we go out any further, anyone watching on catch up, replay. If you haven't already, give this a like, give it a comment, share, subscribe. You'll be kept informed of all future lives 
and any videos that I put out. So please, it's not for me. This is the more like if you like it, it's not saying, Oh, you like what I say or do. You may not agree with what I say or do all the time. It's just so that the analytics of YouTube it pushes the video out, it pushes it out more. So more people get to see this. So please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Alright, now we're going to go back to this. So I've got to find out first where it is, okay? So hold on, let's just mute this a minute so that I can see. Uh, That's the top. That was the last picture they took of him. That's what I was trying to show you, that one. The big writing one. Right? So. I'm just going to skip along. Skip, skip. Right. Let's see what this was saying here. Oh, God. I stayed on the phone for quite some time. The call logs have been very. I'll go back just a little bit. Determine those, but on its own, what does that mean? Huh? But it's unfortunate is a phone log. And <laughs> was unusual at that point everything so, seemed okay there's actually a piece of so to make something very crystal clear so that okay. way there's transparency across the board me and the mom were on the phone at 9 43 or 9 46 in the evening and so here the stepdad says he and um sebastian's mother were on the phone uh The phone logs have been um, verified by police. Now, the thing with. Got for the dogs up. Go to bed. Uh, she went to bed around midnight and then she wakes up and to get it. There's a mother here. I'll let it, I'll play that last part again so he can say it. Ten o'clock, but you said that Sebastian went to bed at nine p.m., and then you got up off the couch and you went to bed, and you said that was around midnight. Midnight, and, and nothing was unusual at that point. Everything so, seemed okay. There's actually a piece of so to make something very crystal clear. So that okay. way there's transparency across the board. Me and the mom were on the phone at 9.43 or 9.46 in the evening. We stayed on the phone for quite some time. The call logs have been verified by all the police departments, TBI included. Uh, we stayed on the phone. It was very lengthy. Mom did slightly start falling asleep while she was on the couch. Um, I had said...
hey, you need to wake up, put the dogs up, go to bed. Uh, now, mind you, that was right around midnight, just before midnight or right around midnight. Okay, so then at that point, does she... He wasn't, uh, Roxanne, at least what he's saying, he wasn't home. So that's why he's asking her to put dogs up. Yeah. So then mom does go to bed and wakes up early in the morning to go wake her son up, get him ready for school. And now we have a worried mom who can't find her son in the house. Um, mom made an effort to look and search several times um mom has called me at the time and asked me okay so mom made an effort yeah yeah, could have been a video call absolutely situation that had occurred where you felt like there would have been something that happened and i also had asked you if there were any friends that Sebastian might have possibly left the house with, or if he had any contact with anyone on social media. Do you want to comment about that again? He doesn't have a social media. Uh, uh. So here he's going to talk about the social media. And just to make a point, um, I joined this. I joined this panel last night. And uh, Duchess was going to be speaking on a conversation she had had with the family, and then they had offered to come up. So the actual interview was unplanned, and just uh, know that people, if we're on the show, you can't can't control. Kids can be easily manipulated. Um, He's very young in mind. Yes, he may be. Right. He's about 15 and he's 15 in age in his body, but his mind is not caught up, up to his body. Um, but that is something that goes with autistic children. So he got me. Would know. Right. Um, but for the record, we I am a very strict parent. I do. He does not have social media, not in our household. He doesn't. Uh, online game he i mean i am i'm pretty strict that when it comes to that kind of that you have control of that because social media can be very dangerous for young kids um because they don't realize who who they may be talking to this to make sure you're monitoring you know what your kids are doing so I had asked you both you know did you um I'm going to have to get my headphones charged up. Anyway, I know that wasn't very good because I was having to try and keep out the others talking. Uh, but did anyone notice anything on that? On what he did say? Right? He kept uh, referring to the mother, his wife, as the mom the mom no like as trevor said i'm here trevor said if he's acknowledging the parents it's like he'd say the mom because in his eyes she is the mom right but if it was his partner he'd have a pet name for her or even call her by her own name like i think 
I believe her name's Kate. Why can you say then Kate? I was on the phone with Kate from half nine to nearly twelve o'clock. Then Kate got up and went to bed. And when Kate got up in the morning, Sebastian was gone. She phoned me and then I me and Kate was having this conversation on the phone about where we could be and all this lot. Why didn't you refer to her by her name? Right? And I understand, like, the thing about the internet. Yeah? I really do. But I think if you're concerned parents, you can monitor what he does. You can monitor it. You can set a uh, boundary sort of thing on the uh, on a laptop or a computer. You can set, like, if I go on to one, I've got like a Google search and I've got this other web search engine. If I use this one search engine, for some reason it won't let me into a lot of sites. So I don't use that search engine. I keep forgetting and sometimes I click on it and go into it. But Google will let me go into all these other search, all these other sites. That's what I mean. You can have, um, you can have perimeters put on. So they can't go on certain things. So I think that's a shame, right? That they're not letting him have any use of the internet at all. Now, we're going to watch the video in a minute and it's a lot of tally a lot of tally i liked that one last night because i was watching it on twitch time and he's very good and i know that's what i picked up out of it it was like um he was doing all the talking yes the mother that is very very distraught very distraught but the stepfather is very calm very calm too calm for my liking if you know what i mean way too calm for my liking so it's just the way i kept referring to as the 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 mum not the mother or or Sebastian's mother or Kate, his wife, or anything like that, their mum. Now there is also another case going on with them, with the father, the stepfather, father, custody, a custody case. And you know, because of rumours coming out about him and people spreading wild rumours about him. Is they've actually called to seal all documents, everything, right? But this has been going on since 2017, 2018, if I heard right. I've never heard of a custody battle go on for what, 17, 18, 19, nearly 17, 18, 19, 20. Nearly six to seven years, a custody battle. What's going on in that? But he says it's got nothing to do with Sebastian. He probably hasn't. But it makes you wonder why is it taking so long to sort this custody thing out? Right? Anyway. Next. Just watch. What I want to do first is I want to read through this first before we go to the video. There's the video and it comes in four sections. Oh no, oh no, I forgot to add it to the stage. All right.
there's the video it comes in the full section right but what i want to do first i want to read it out and then watch the video because yesterday when i was reading sections out i thought oh they're a really loving couple you know what i mean they're in sync with each other and they know how each other's works they they are supportive of the communities doing their searches and everything so it is hendersonville tank can you see as the search for missing teenagers sebastian rogers enters hold on i just want to make sure of that enters the it's eight day his parents are speaking out for the first time on television about the last time they saw the 15 year old and i yeah i don't like to say that because that imposes that makes me think well is he dead then i would have just said the last time they saw the 15 year old an Amber Alert was issued on behalf of Rogers, who was last seen around midnight on February the 26th. Was he seen though? Because the mother didn't say she checked on him. She said she just went to bed. He'd gone to bed about nine. She went to bed about twelve. The stepfather was at work. You know what I mean? So did she check on him? I don't think she did because otherwise she just said I went up to bed and as I've gone into bed before going to bed to my room I went in and checked on Sebastian you know what I mean she didn't do say anything like that so how do we know he didn't sneak out the house earlier on in the evening while she was dozing on the sofa you know what I mean was the doors locked then or did she lock the doors when she went to bed was the doors locked when she got up in the morning anyway midnight on february the 26th state and local authorities have searched for him for more than a week using helicopters drones and search and rescue dogs as well as hundreds of trained professionals on foot However, law enforcement announced Monday they are scaling down the search. Rogers, who has autism, autism, had not been seen on camera or in person since his disappearance. His mother, Kate Proudfoot, and stepfather, Chris Proudfoot, sat down with WSMV boss Holly Thompson Monday afternoon to discuss the day since. Right? I don't wish this on anyone, his mother Katie said, anyone. On one, on one constant roller coaster ride of helpless and hopeless, Chris Proudfoot added. Many, many, many other emotions all in one, and it's a never ending world because it doesn't stop. He also said something a bit profound that I found. I don't, I'll point it out to you when it comes to it. Roger's parents said the day Sebastian went missing seemed like a normal day. The family went to sleep, but when Katie Crayford went to wake Sebastian up, he wasn't there. She immediately called her husband, who was at work. I can't find him, she said, describing that conversation. What do you mean you can't find him? I said, he's not in the house. Katie Crayford searched, said she searched all over the home inside closets outside and couldn't find him. The 15 year old has high functioning autism and is described as very smart, a gamer and not a mischievous child by any means. Why he's gone is still a mystery, she said. My son, my son doesn't run, he's not a runner. He never run away before, she said. I don't know why he's walked out that door. So did he go out that door? There's answers to questions right now that we are searching for desperately, 
and you just don't have that Sebastian father I did. His parents have been criticised by many for not talking to the media until now. His parents say they shouldn't be judged because no one knows what they're going through. While day after day search efforts to find their son have been unsuccessful. Which is true. We don't know what they are going through on a day to day basis. We don't. Right? All Katie and Chris Perfect want at this time is for, for Sebastian to come home and say they are grateful for the community and law enforcement efforts during the extensive search. They said, we love you so much and we want you to come home. You're not in trouble, his mother said. I just want my baby to be okay. Right? Now that's just like a highlight of what the interview said. Sort of thing. Quick highlight. Now, we're going to watch it. Alright. All right, let's put you on mute so you can get your feedback. Oh, God, my internet is playing up. I'll make you wait. Hold on. Uh, I'll just wait to get this every time I come on the a live. It's not letting me go on mute. Hold on, we'll just bear with it for a minute. I'll be, it'll come through in a minute. But it makes out the family are. Uh, Caring, loving, supportive. You know what I mean? So when I heard last night, when I read all that last night, I thought, okay, they're a pillar of the community, they're supporting the community and what they're doing and all this lot. I thought, not many, yeah, okay, they're a good family. And it's kicking me off. So I'll show it. I'll put it back up again. Hopefully, no. It works. So hopeless and many other emotions all in one and it's a never-ending roller coaster it doesn't stop it won't stop until he walks through the door hi there mg He's going to walk through that door. <laughs> and the street will be flooded again with. That boy's going to have more friends than he knows what to do with when he comes home. <laughs> so, 
Here we are, eight days now searching for him. Walk us through that Sunday night that he went missing. Walk us through, we've got so many people. Okay, how did this happen? So let's walk us through that night. Um, that day, So were you in instantly thinking something wrong or were you like he may just be I mean I took a second I took a second while I was looking forward in case he'd gotten up and was trying to get birth restricted sometimes. Um uh, takes <laughs> Uh, we can't find them out now. At that point, is that when you call 911 or what went your mind? She, while well, we were on the phone, and I was asked, like, is he on the other side of the bed? We, the normal places he made in the house, you know, and she wasn't. So I was like, okay, well, hold on a minute, and immediately after. <clears throat> Called okay. all over the house, outside, inside, public, in every closet. When minutes they were here, they responded with us. Here we go. I was, I was at work. Memphis at St. Jude. So it's, you know, I have an earpiece in that talks to my phone. I have another earpiece in that does the radios. So when she was talking to me, it was like, what? I was confused. Road. So, what's going through both of their minds? I mean, are we panicking? Is it just, oh, I think he's at the neighbor's house? Or he's, he's now four. Okay. Um, hey, to go. He walked up. He, he's a good kid. He's not. He's not a mischievous child by any means. They have no answers, you know, or questions. Excuse me, questions. That we are. Yeah, I do don't think. My mum and Kinect. I swear to God, I'm going to burn food to them if it goes dark because my skin connects better. Oh. Sorry about this. This is my internet playing up again. As usual. I swapped internet users because of this. Yeah, mine is dreadful. I don't know why. I've I changed internet users because my last one kept uh, going up on me. I link to TV again and reconnect on my TV. I'm not losing it on my TV. I just lose it on my... 
back and back and back and back, back and there might have been a reason. Okay, we've cooperated with all the authorities as far as anything they've asked us to provide. We've provided. Okay, no. we still just don't have any answers. Did he? Do you have any friends that could have possibly contacted him in some way on his phone? All his friends at school have been questioned to my knowledge and none of them knew anything. With this big question mark, he's vanished. Yes, ma'am. I think I'm going to lie. Um, all right. He doesn't have any extra curricular activities, but I can tell you now, if he did, his dad would be in the front row. <laughs> Um, in two different house and the communication between the three of us is, is great. I mean, yes, we're just like your parent. We all have our disagreements, but in the end, we come together as a team and we work and solutions as we best see fit. I mean, he's, I'm almost in contact with him almost daily. Let's talk about, so tell me about Sebastian. How would you describe him? Sweet. Uh, loves he loves uh, running. He loves to fidget and um, Uno. Lord, that's one of his favorite games right now. Um, favorite color is green. Music. He loves it. I'm collecting. I'm collecting. I the Eddie. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Jam. And we've got so.
I mean, country rock. I'm sure you got this into it. No, we don't. We don't. We don't allow the hip hop. Well, he, he didn't really well, get I into it anyway. We... You mentioned he loved running. So, did he love the outdoors at all? I mean, would something outside that was somewhat outdoorsy be enticing so, to him or pull him outdoors? He loves like when. Um, when we were in California and the school had this lap thing to gain money. It was a fundraiser. And every year he was, I did this many laps. I did this many laps. I mean, I've got t-shirts where they were back and the kid mark them mark, and keep with the cross the back. He likes playgrounds and being dirty. He don't like being dirty. Yeah, he's your tomboy style child where he goes outside and plays in the mud. He loves animals, but he's terrified <laughs> of bugs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. even a fly, and he's like, oh! <laughs> right, we go on to the next one now. Right, but a few things have come up to my mind watching this. You. you don't like getting dirty, you don't like books, so you're not going to warm you up in the woods. You're not going to warm you up in the woods. And that one comment that me, the only reason a child would leave a house without shoes, an autistic child would leave a house without his shoes. Would be for his mother or for his father. His stepfather was at work. But how do you? Let's talk too because he's believed to me from a lot of Describe that to our viewers too. His way of and maybe what's about for that. Uh, Did he have possibly store gotten right out of the transportation? I would say it like this. Everybody has an opinion, you know, it, and it's perfectly okay to have that opinion, but you're not in the situation. You don't quite understand. Um, I wish people would step back, take a different wide open view and not assume 
like what they have. But it's just better to stick to the facts. If they have questions, all you have to do is ask. That is going ongoing in another state. Um, we've requested that case to be sealed because there are some individuals who who have taken upon themselves to put stuff out there that they don't quite know, which all they have to do is ask. I'll tell you. Um, but because of that, you know, it's has to do with something. It to, you know, I would respect that and then keep an open mind. It's totally different. Is Sebastian as it airs? And if he is, what do you want to say to Sebastian? We'd be happy to hear from you right now. Oh gosh. I have to come home and you're not in trouble. Trust me, the other way, from every parent to every members to probably everyone in the community. But there's no malice that we just want our boy home. Bad. Bad. But. That mama's heart, I know it's daddy's too, but I feel like there's always that extra special bond. Can you walk us through what you're thinking right now? I just want my baby to be okay. I don't know where he's at. I don't know where he's at. Let's talk about the community because I want you all to know, even, even my church body, I mean, we're all praying, we're all praying for his safe return quickly. What do you all want to say to the community? Thank you. With everything from the bottom of our hearts, we, I would not have, I mean, how far this has gotten, but there's no way to repay gratitude, the love that we have felt from the community, the prayers, but thank you. But from don't the stop looking. Yeah, please. My son is somewhere. Until he's home. Did you notice what he said there? He didn't expect it to go as like it did. Ex like, hold on, we'll go back. I'm going to go back. Let me. Imagine oh. how far this has gotten. Okay. But there's no way to repay. What do you all want to say to the community? Thank you. With everything from the bottom of our hearts, we, I would not have imagined how far this has gotten, but there's no way to repay the gratitude, the love that we have felt from the community, the prayers, but thank you. But from don't the stop looking. Yeah, please. My son is somewhere. This ain't over until he's home. Right, we're into the last part now of the interview. The Buckley's has so many choices. So, you know we made a few. Spaghetti, ravioli, cordovini, chicken, Hold on, I'll try to get this in. Pizza, and the Go to avantispeoria.com to find your Avantis. So we have, let's, let's mention, it's been on the, the search itself. As we know, thousands of miles have 
basically been traced and retraced. We've got hundreds, we've got volunteers, we've got law enforcement from within the state, from without, you know, outside of the state. Um, I mean, do you feel like they're doing as much as they can? I mean, you, you, you all have been right there on the seat. Everything that's done. As far as other than everything, anything and everything has been an option. Brought assets and resources from various counties, potentially other states. I mean, I don't know what they could do. Amazing, but they still haven't brought my baby back. They will. He's out there somewhere. So it's basically, it's one day at a time getting through this and bringing him home. What is the reaction to the fact that somehow he, his, his image, he hasn't been captured on any video? Any... I know that it was very dark that night. I mean, it gets dark around here at night in general, but, um, but we haven't found on any camera footage to prove where he's at or where he's gone. I know that again, um, as everybody and anybody that has cameras, trail cams, stores, um, check even from before he went missing just to see if there's anything at all. I understand there, there was a request or video, any sort of footage from early day on Sunday before he disappeared. That I don't believe we can comment on right now. That is not something that I believe we're pervy to at this point with law enforcement. That is something I would have a definite direct back to them. But I mean, they, there's all kinds of requests out there. There's thousands of hours of video that are coming mm -hmm. and we're just hoping we'll find something. And I know this is so sensitive. What do you say to people who inevitably end up pointing their finger at you? We're talking here and I'm going to clear. I can tell you that mom, myself, and the father have worked very fully and cooperatively with all agencies across the board we have anything that they want to be provided um anybody who's watching we've got a lot of folks in this community in their accounts just throughout the state well what do you want to say to them help spread the word and keep searching and thank you and um just if you see him ball him thank all the viewers everybody's helped from across the board i mean everybody has been tremendous call his name he'll answer if he doesn't answer he'll at least he'll look even if he's not being verbal at the moment because he can talk but sometimes he don't talk uh call his name Tell him to stay put. He could be on the move, so keep checking your properties. Yes. I, the search is never over until he comes home. So smart. But do for everything as a volunteer. Like I said, this is, I've never seen something to this magnitude before. Our community is amazing. We're all praying and searching for Sebastian's safe return. Thank you both for Thank talking you. with me. Right, well, that was the interview. I'm sorry about the internet cutting in and cutting out and kicking me off my own site. But I don't know. He's too calm, too calm for my liking. The mother, she's a train wreck. 
she is, you know what I mean? She's like any mother whose child has gone missing. She, she don't know what to say, what to think. And did you notice as well? She didn't look at him. She looked at him a couple of times, but the majority of the interview, she just stared straight ahead. She didn't look at him. He would look at her to make sure, like, to say, oh, what are you going to say now, sort of thing. But he, she never looked at him. Only a few times, like at the beginning and other times during the interview, but only a few times. The every, rest of the time, she did not look at him. And that case where that comment where that mother said about her own autistic child, the only reason her child would leave the house with no shoes on, late at night, in the middle of the night, would be for the mother or the father. Now we just learned that the stepfather was at work. Now, I went on to Google Maps and um, here we are. This is Google Maps again. This is where he lived, around here. I'm not going to go on the streets again because I've been up and down that street. I could walk up, up it blindfolded, I really could. But like most autistic children, they get to know certain routes, right? I'm sure my grandson, who seeks now, can would be able to bring his mum and dad without any direction, just say, okay, take us to your grand's, right? And he would be able to take him to the bus stop, right? Get on the bus. He'd know when to get off and where to go once he got off that bus. Right? Because that's his routine. He does it every fortnight. Every fortnight he comes to mine on the weekend. He knows, and that's his routine. And I remember once I was at my sister's, at my daughter's. And we were staying in a bungalow. We rented a bungalow for the weekend, which was what, a five minute walk from my daughter's. Right? Five minutes. My grandson hadn't been to my daughter's. I, well, he'd been to my daughter's, but had never walked from that bungalow to hers before. Right? By the second time that he, he was going down to my daughter's house, that weekend, he knew where to go. Okay, it was only a short distance, but he knew where to go. He knew when to, when to cross the road, when to, when to turn, when to cross over the next road, when to turn, and what house to go to. He knew. By the second time I was walking from that bungalow to my daughter's, he knew where to go. So if he... They're very quick. They do learn very quickly on things like that. Right? And so I was thinking, could he have left to make his way to his dad's over in Clarksville? But kept off the main roads. We could mean going all the way through them wooded area and the forests and all that lot. It would take a few, a uh, long time to walk there, but could he have done that? And in the process, because he's not been on his medication, possibly lost all track, didn't know where, where he was, his mind's going over, doing overtime because he's not been on his medication. He could be getting confused, he could get, be getting a bit anxious. You know what I mean? But then again, we come, it keeps coming back to the dogs. The dogs. 
Why was no saint of Sebastian picked up apart from the guard from garden area? Maybe. Why was no ever saint picked up? I've been walking down the road, up the road, anywhere. There was no saint picked up. There's no, yes, he's wearing black. But I'll tell you, these cameras, they pick up, they pick up people. Yeah, they might be wearing black, but they know when the person's walked past. Right? So for him not to be on any camera at all, any uh, security camera, any door, rings at the doorbell, and I'm sure around them wooded areas there are trial cameras. Sure of it. Right? So, there's nothing though. There's nothing. No scent of him. No video of him. Nothing. How did you get out of that house without leaving a scent? It doesn't matter whether you're wearing shoes or whether you're barefoot. As you walk somewhere, your body leaves a scent. Automatically, your body's leaving that scent. You know what I mean? That's how they know when a child's been in and out of house up by the scent. So it's, that is what I keep coming back to now, is the dogs. And the fact there's no footage of him on any video, on any security video, any doorbell ring, doorbell, nothing. How did he get out of that house unseen by anything and not leaving his scent behind? Can't be done. Well, it can be. There's only one way he got out of that house and he didn't walk. That's how I look at it. I'm sorry, but this child I hope and pray I am wrong. I hope and pray I am wrong. But because there's no scent about that child did not walk out of that house. Does the mother know? Maybe not. I don't think so. She's too distraught. She just wants her baby back. You know what I mean? But I heard as well, there have been rumours about the stepfather talking to neighbours about how Sebastian has been, has, hasn't made it easy with, them, with their marriage. You know what I mean? So I don't know how true that is. But I hope to God it isn't true because, right, is she, and then someone said, I read a comment, someone said, could she be a victim of DV? He seems very controlling. Very controlling about everything. It's his house. In my house, we don't have the internet. Well, he doesn't have the internet. Everyone else does, but he doesn't. Sebastian doesn't. And I think that is such a shame because you can monitor them online. It's these parents who don't monitor their children online are the ones where, where a child could be lured away. You know what I mean? But I've got to, I've got one grandson who is on the spectrum and he's online, he goes online, he goes on YouTube, he watches things on his mum's TV downstairs, but it's on the TV and his mum can monitor it, right? She'd rather it be on the TV so she can see it when she's in the living room or in the kitchen, she can see what he's actually watching then. Then on his tablet, because when he's on his tablet, he can go upstairs, in his bedroom. You know what I mean? He can hide in a corner and watch these things. Like you don't know what he's watching then. But if it's on your TV, you're monitoring it. 
before a child of 15 to say all he wants at Christmas was friends. I'm sorry, but that is sad. I find that really, really sad. Right? But I'm going to punch him on... The maps, the route to uh, hold on. directions starting from to go there that gives us a start point because it's near enough to where they live to Clarksville. Right now, it takes Depending on the route you take, it can take up to one hour, 10 minutes, one hour, seven minutes. 53.3 miles, 52.9 miles. And that's by car. Walking. Right, now see how it goes through the trees. Right. Taking him off the main roads. Yeah. That route, this blue route here, he lives just there, right next to the school, sort of thing. That blue route, the 257. Right. But what's say he didn't follow that route? But going across land, going across here. You know what I mean? He knew how to get to his dad's by car. Did he punch it up in your map somewhere? How to get to his dad walking? But then again, there's no scent. Again, we go back to the dogs. There's no scent of him walking up that road. You're walking down that road. You're walking anywhere around there. There's no scent. So, once again, even if he tried walking to his dad's, I think it would just stuck to the, the route he knows, which is this one. He knows that route with the car. So the that route or this route he knows. Right? It's one of them routes he knows that is by car. Hold on. Yeah. This is the route he knows by car. Right? You may know that blue route where they turn off here and go that way. I don't know which way they go. But he knows the route to his dad. By car. <sighs> Sorry about that. But if they'd have found a scent, those dogs would have trapped him until they hit water. Sometimes by hitting water, they can lose their scent. Right? If they crossed over in the river, they sometimes they can pick the scent up again the other side of the river. Sometimes. Sometimes they go, can't. But there's no scent of him. Nothing. And that comment they made where they said they can't talk about that. They haven't been made privy to that information near the end of the interview. Because they said they was now looking at wanting to find video of him from Sunday afternoon onwards. They want to know the last time that lad was seen alive. I hate to say that, but that's how it, how it is. It's not, they're not saying he's dead, but they just want proof of life. So if it was like 7 o'clock, something else. But they wouldn't be seeing him. If they'd come back, right, 
from their lunch, whatever time they came back, they just got out of the car, got in that, gone in the house. Right? So unless there's a neighbour directly opposite them, with a doorbell or a camera, that hits their house, no one is going to see him. So, and that comment he made, um, he, he didn't expect it to sort of like develop like it did. What was you expecting? For you to get rid of the body and then nothing be said? You know what I mean? I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not saying he did. I'm not saying he did. I'm just throwing it out there. But that is the map to his dad. Right? Now, I'm going to punch him from there to... Hang on. Uh, Memphis. No, we're not doing that. Take that one out. Take that one out. Right? Now that's a three and a half hour drive. Right? Being on the phone with someone from half nine, 20 to 10 till 12, while it's supposed to be working at, what was it he worked? A tarot crane? You know what I mean? And how did he know she was falling asleep? And why would you talk to your wife for three, two and a half hours when you've just spent all day with her? You're at work, you shouldn't be on the phone talking to your wife unless there's an emergency. And there was no emergency then. So, I know there's these super jealous guys out there that need to know exactly where their partner is exactly at any given time of the day. You know, that's an unhealthy relationship if that's the sort of thing they've got. She needs to know what she's doing and where she is at, what time and everything. And that's why they're having these two and a half hour calls. Cool. It doesn't sound right, but that doesn't mean Oh, he was at work. I think they would have checked on his work to make sure he was there, though. So, if he called about half nine, and it takes three hours, three and a half hours, four hours to get there, he must have left about, what, five? Five or earlier to get there. And then he's going to be working all night. I didn't know tarot crane operators work during the night. Perhaps after the USA, perhaps they're doing the USA. I don't know. Is he one of these tarot crane operators that unloads uh, cargo off? Things, you know what I mean? But I wouldn't have thought he'd be working on to the tarot crane. I don't know. That's just my opinion. I'm just throwing it out there. But as you can see, it's three and a half hours to four hours to get from his, where they live to there, to where he works, to rank back where he works. Right, and it's, um, what did I say it was to get to the fathers? Uh, I'm just in Asian, two clocks, twelve, eight, this one, half. What did I say it was an hour and eleven minutes by car? Now, apparently, the, the father works for the, um, I, th I think I heard, it, what I heard one, in one case, he heard he worked for the uh, state police. 
where uh, Clarksville played Stately. And but then I heard he works for the uh, prison people, Clarksville prison, whatever they are, whatever the title is there. Right? So I don't know. And because of his position of the job he does, he's the biofather won't be able to talk about anything at the moment. He won't. Because of his job, he's got to stay neutral. He's got to stay out of it. Well, not stay out of it, but stay as neutral as he can and not do interviews. But I'm sure they have checked on his father as well. See where he was. But it's just those interviews. It's like he was controlling everything. Now, excuse me, can someone correct me here? If you're the mother, you get up, you find your child missing. And then you phone your husband to say, look, my, if our son is missing or my son is missing, he's not here. Uh, would you, I, would, wouldn't you be phoning the police? Because you're the one there, not the stepfather. He's at work three hours away. Right? So why did the stepfather phone the police and not the mother? That's another big thing of her. But what I didn't like was when he kept referring her to in that phone call he did, on that uh, live he did, to as the mum. Right? I knew we'd have that long. I'm not joking, but you've been with, like, you've been with your partner or your husband all day long, he goes to work. You think, thank God for that, a bit of peace. You know what I mean? I can get some work done now. I can get my house tidy. You know what I mean, sort of thing. You're not going to be on the app phone unless it's that sort of possessive sort of person that has to know exactly what she's doing. You know what I mean? Perhaps he's starting work at half nine, ten o'clock at night, I don't know. We takes a good three hours to get there. Three, three and a half hours, maybe longer. So he's got to leave. If he was on the phone to her at half nine, 20 to 10, take three hours off that, that's 6.30, 6 o'clock. He had to have left about 6 o'clock. Perhaps he just got to work when you phoned her. But then, when you just get to work, you say, hi, hon, I'm here. Just to let you know, I've got here, okay. I'll, I'll text you in the morning. Or I'll phone you in the morning when you get up with, the, with this child. You know what I mean? Why did they need to have that two and a half hour conversation? Something is coming to my mind, but I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say why they would need to have a two and a half hour conversation. Especially when they've just been together all day, they've been had some lunch or whatever. So um, you wouldn't need to talk to your husband or your partner for half nine, ten, or ten, for two and a half hours. When you've just spent all day with him. What have you got to tally? Talk about for two and a half hours. Your son's in bed, so come on. You're, he's at work. What are you talking about for two and a half hours? And then he tells her to go to bed because she's falling asleep on the sofa. How did she you know? I, she was on the sofa. Okay, she could have told him, yeah, I'm just sitting on the sofa, chilling out a bit. Sebastian's gone to bed, right? B, how did he know she was falling asleep? And then he's telling her to go and put the dogs out. 
So go and put the dogs out and go to bed. How did he know that she hadn't already put the dogs out while she was talking to him? She could have. But I'm sure the police would have done a check on his work. To make sure he was at work. Because it's something just not right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I keep harking on, but it's something not right. That scent dogs, they would pick his scent up. They did pick a scent up, but it was a false, false scent. It wasn't the like it was something else, someone else. Right, but they never picked any other scent up, and that's what I keep going back to. The is the scent dogs. They've had blood hands right there, and the blood hands pick nothing up either. You know what I mean? Have they checked his car or her car? His Obviously, she's got a car, maybe. She needs a car during the day to take the lad to school or to take him to wherever. And to do shopping or to go to work herself. So have to check their cars. But I, I like two and a half hour conversation when you've just spent all day with each other. Does not make sense to me does not make sense the fact that he refers to her as the mom if it's iffy why not um, my wife went to bed then and my wife got up in the morning and found sebastian he doesn't talk as to, about him as sebastian found him missing found her son the mom found the son him missing or the son missing you know what I mean? It's all the mum. The, the mum. The, I swear, I know, like, I must admit, when my one grandson was younger, he always called his mum D. Right? Because that's her name, thing is. And everyone calls her D. Right? So we go D. If he wanted anything. And they could never get him to call her mum. So someone said to him, I'll tell you what, why doesn't why don't you get Ryan to call your mum? Right? So that might be the reason he calls her mum rather than by her name. So he knows then the lad knows who he's talking about. Like your mum said this or whatever. And it's just something he's automatically got used to saying is the word mum. So the lag will pick up on it as well. And now he does call her mum. And but at one stage it was mum, then it was mummy, and then it was mama. But you just call her, not all the time, but sometimes you just call her mum. But her partner didn't want to do that. He said, I'm not calling you mum. I've got my mum, you know what I mean? You're not my mum. But whenever I was down visiting, I'd go, where's your mum? And he knew who I meant because he'd point at her or look at her. But he will never say mum and go D. But now he does. Sometimes he says D, sometimes he'll go mum. But we're look, we're talking about when he was what three, four years old. He's now six. So he's probably a teacher saying, Oh, your mum will be here soon. You know what I mean? Things like that. Well, it could be something like that, and that's why he calls her, refers to his wife as the mum. Because otherwise, perhaps if it, if he called her Kate or whatever her name is, or whatever name 
he loves to call her Pluff. Perhaps the sun was picking up on calling his, her Kate. And that's why he started calling her Mum. You know what I mean? There's reasons around why he calls her Mum. But it is strange. It is strange that he refers to her as Mum when you talk to him in an interview like that. Like he could refer to him in, in an interview. He could say, well, Kate phoned me in the morning telling me Sebastian wasn't in the house. Sebast because when he's around Sebastian, he could, it's okay. I can understand him saying, go to your mum. Oh, there's your mum there. You know what I mean? But to call her the mum when Sebastian's not around, that's odd. That is odd. So, I don't know what else. I don't know. Is there anything else? No. Let me just have a look. Because sometimes it is. Thanks. And then I'll come up my live and right. I'm wondering now. Being as they, they are like literally winding up the search for Sebastian by the main search team, I wonder now if the community will start getting little groups of people going out and searching. You know what I mean? But I don't think he's gone into the woods either because he don't like the dirt. It's not going to go clambering through woods and foresting where there's bugs and flies and dirt. And He's not going to do that. He's not going to do that. My one grandson, he's very like that. He don't like being dirty. My other grandson who I have on the weekends, he's, he's all into the dirt and building dens and everything. You know what I mean? You don't care if he's outside and his hands get dirty. He just wipes his hands off and that's it. He carries on. But. Oh, look, I found the interview now. So. Yeah, we'll watch that interview again. No, but. Uh, I'm here. Hey, good afternoon. I'm Eric Craddock from the Summer County Sheriff's Office, and I'm the Chief Deputy here, uh, joined by Ken Weiner, the Director of Summer County EMA. Uh, wanted to come to the public and give you guys an update on the search for Sebastian Rogers. Last Monday morning at about 6.30, Sebastian was reported missing from his home. Uh, since then, we've conducted an extensive and, and exhaustive search uh, around the home, looking for any evidence, any trace of Sebastian. Um, at this time, the decision has been made to scale back on the ground search operations. Uh, let me be clear that this, this does not diminish our commitment to finding Sebastian. This is simply us transitioning from the ground search to the investigative side. Uh, we are still committed to finding Sebastian and bringing him home safe. We have no leads, no details to indicate that Sebastian is not alive. Uh, we are going to follow up on every lead. We have a planned response. If anyone has a sighting of Sebastian, uh, our patrol deputies will be out, our investigators will be out. We are still coordinating with law enforcement across the state. Uh, we are still consulting with experts. Um, this decision does not come lightly. We have consulted with, uh, and I've deferred to the experts in search and rescue. Uh, every time we've asked, they've said you've done everything you can do. Um, at this time, Director Warner. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll, <clears throat> we'll continue to have a command post um, at the fire station there, uh, we won't man it 24/7, um, but we will have we will have 
canine units in the area. We'll have teams ready to go. The sheriff's also have deputies on patrol. And if we get any report, we'll respond to that location. We'll send K-9 to them and search teams should we get any information. Uh, so we will continue. And any any tips we get, we will reactivate uh, to the level we need to, to respond with. I'd like to take a moment and thank all the first responders from across the state of Tennessee that have come out and help us in the search for Sebastian. They've come from as far as Knox County. We've called in the state National Guard to help. The Army National Guard was here to help. Uh, if there was a resource we thought we could utilize to help locate Sebastian, we've used it. Uh, and we will continue to do so based on the leads that come in. Uh, the Sheriff's Office continues to urge families to check your properties, uh, to check your cameras. No detail is too small. If you have a detail that you think is important, please call 615-451-3838. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'll put the contact numbers on in the description. But if anyone watches this who's in that area, check and check again. Right? Someone did, I, met, I thought about this myself and someone did mention it in a chat earlier. Right, but I'm not sure now. But have they been checking up in the trees? Is a lag perhaps it's climbed up in one of the trees? Oh, okay. What? I don't know what I'm listening to. No. Oh, God, my listening. What is going to on my tablet? Oh, come on. Oh, get back up there. Oh, I'm trying to get rid of this. Oh. Sorry about that. I couldn't get it to shut down. But there's a route to his father's house. From there to there. And if he'd gone through the woods to get to his father's, you know what I mean? As he got a map on him somehow, as he. But there's no sense. Again, we can, he can't, no, he can't go walked up. I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep an open mind. I really am. But it's not making it easy. Right. There's a get father's thing again. It's not making this easy for me to be so open-minded. Yesterday, yes, I was very open-minded. I was going through all the factors that he could have walked up the road and everything. But then that thing about the dogs kept hitting me in the back of my mind. They would have picked up a scent. They would have. Right? The own, I don't want to say this, but I'm, I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say this. That boy did not walk out of that house. See, I said it. I said it. He didn't walk out of that house. There's no way. There would have been a scent. And if the mother's right in what she's saying, he didn't have no shoes because all his shoes are accounted for. Then he's walking barefoot. He would definitely have left the scent. Definitely. And I don't care how dark it is. Cameras will pick up something going past. It may look like a shadow, but they'll pick something up going past. You know what I mean? And even if, say, the stepfather come back home from work, while the mother was in bed, did something happen there? 
his car would have been picked up. He would have been reported missing from work. Because it takes three hours walk each way. You know what I mean? So you're looking at six hours. Six, seven hours driving. There. Three hours back. So, and I can't, and the other thing that I can't get over is that two and a half hour phone call they had. It's, it sounds like a bit, when he, he was talking, when the stepfather was talking, because the mother is a wreck, she's a wreck, it sounded a bit scripted. Sounded like every time you hear him talk, he says the same thing. Every time. There's no alteration. And it's like when you've been interviewed and um What was he? Where was it now? And she was going through it with him at the beginning. And she said, and he said all this stuff. And then she turned around and said, but there's hope. You've got to keep hope. Oh, yes, there's hope. We keep hope in our mind. It's like it was a second thought for him. He didn't think about that before until she mentioned it. So, there's some red flags there, and all I can say is now that it's gone into the investigation side of it, right, where they will look deeper into everything, right, the, the truth will come out. I hope to God he's alive. I hope to God he has walked away from that house somehow, walked away from that house somehow without leaving a scent or being seen on any video or cameras. Right? So. But if he had an accident at home, you can understand, let's just report it. He's having an accident, you know what I mean? Don't try and cover it up. It could, it could have had an accident. But by covering it up, it makes it look a lot worse now. But there's no sightings of him after he's been for that meal. Right? As far as we know, there's no sightings of him anywhere on camera at all. So let's go back to. Is it this thing? Yeah. I'm going to punch in. Oh, let's punch in this one. Uh, mental. That one. See what I mean? It's a three and a half hour drive. If this guy's on the four hour. If it goes the other way, it's four hour thirty eight minutes. But why would you take a longer route home? You go the more direct route. Unless there's diversions going on and there's road works or whatever. Then fair enough you go that way because it's just gonna take you longer, isn't it? So but that's his route to work, to, well, to Memphis. And the one about how yeah, he would go to Calvert's. What's Calvert's? Oh, come on. All right, now I'm going to close down. Here, get as close as I can. Right. Uh, things to do. Let's have a look. Uh, could you miss Paul? Oh, no. I'm not lucky for that. So let's get rid of that. 
É... Deixa eu colocar de novo. Let's have a look at fast food. Alright, let's have a look. Alright. Uh, the parents sleep. I'll come from the school, but the parents have to sleep behind there somewhere. And they said he knows the way to Cal uh to Calvers. What's Calvers? Is it an ice cream place? He likes it there because it has extra whatever on. So, nothing's popping out to me here. But that's quite a distance because there's nothing around by where they live. You know what I mean? They live up here somewhere. And the nearest food places are like all down here. So that's quite a distance as well. Let's see if I can... Wendy's, McDonald's, Arby's, Taco Bell, Sonic Driving, McDonald's, Wendy's, McDonald's, Wendy's. You could be like crystal sonic driving five dollars. Would that be the dairy queen? No, because they said Calvers and there's music coming up. Um, but as I said, they do know certain routes. If they go there often enough on a regular basis, they will get to know the routes to get to certain places. So it's just, I, I've said it once, I'm not saying it again. You can slam me all you want, but evidence is showing no sense, no sense is being left anywhere by that, around that house. I've been leaving the property and walking down or up the road. There's no cameras of him. There's no doorbell video of him. Nothing. And I'm sure out of one of them houses, someone would have picked up something, even if it even if he was wearing all black. <sighs> he took a flipping spot, uh, flashlight with him. Right? So he's not silly. He knew it's dark out there, so he took a flashlight with him. Um... I don't know. There's that, you know, there's the fact that the dogs weren't picking up on any scent. There's the fact there's no video camera, doorbell, wind, doorbell footage of him anywhere. Um, the fact that he refers to his wife as the mum. Now that's fine around the sun. Go and speak to your mum. You know what I mean? But when you're not, when your son's not around, then you don't go the mum. You go Katie or Chris, you know what I mean? It, it's like he was, um, what was the word I was again earlier? He's very detached. Very detached. And why did he make 911 call, not the mother? That's a control thing. So he knows exactly what's being said and to who's, who it's being said to.
จะอาจารย์นะก็เลยก็เองเพราะอวุธใจในสังกัดเซกิบอลโฟฮิจิญยอบูคาดานอิจิเกนพูดไม่วง please someone please me wrong I will apologize to whoever if I have to but with all the evidence coming back about the dogs the cameras everything it's telling me he didn't walk out that house He didn't go to bed at nine o'clock like his mother said. He wasn't even in the house. He was going out of the house by then. And I'm wondering if that two and a half hour talk that I was having was a, a talk on a discussion of what to say, what to do and what to say. You know what I mean? So if I'm wrong, I'll apologize, but it's just, just something that was. So I'm going to leave it at this because I've been on here over two hours now. And I'll go through that video again, but not today, probably tomorrow, because I want to have a look at Elijah King on, see what's happening there. So I'm saying goodbye. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here with me. MG, I'll see you again soon. So, till now, till when I see you all again. Good night. Oh, before I go, before I go, like, comment, share, subscribe. Let's get this video out there. We need as many videos out there so, so people can see these videos, see what's going on. I read a comment that apparently someone who lived 45 minutes away from where the lad lived knew nothing about this. Where, where the hell has she been for the last week? So she obviously doesn't watch a lot of TV or anything on, you, on, on the internet because she knew nothing about this. So... Please share it, comment, subscribe. Let's get the money to me like to get the analytics so the video gets pushed out there. So until later, thank you for being here with me. And I'll speak to you, chat to you all soon.